Well, hello there. Uh, Guthrie Govan here with part four. Unbelievably, it's part four already of our five-part series about string bending. And I figured it was time for us to turn our attentions to something with more of a hillbilly flavour. Um, so this is going to be a little more challenging and confusing than some of the previous things that we've looked at. So rather than rambling, as has become the custom, I thought I'd uh, prepare a few special little licks for you. And they all have something of a country flavour. And the, the theme running throughout all of this stuff is the idea of playing more than one note and some combination of your double stop actually being bent. In some cases, both notes are bent. In some cases, one note remains static and the other one bends. So, if you will, a very fancy upscale version of the unison bend that we met some months back. Um, so, to get the ball rolling, um, how about a nice lick that works in a C dominant context? Uh, and I'll show you the ingredients before the whole lick. Um, these are kind of classic country flavoured double stops. Uh, something that works well over a C dominant chord is. Um, and so what you're doing there, you just play this note and leave it and then kind of bend the B string. So how these things normally work is it's, it's the end note, it's the target pitch of your bend that has to be a chord tone. So what we're doing there is basically a root note and a third, but that only reveals itself once you've done the bend. And that you can expand into... Um, like that. So there's a mini lick for you. And um, there's a related thing you can do on the G and B strings. In bluesier contexts, maybe that would work. But I'm really thinking C dominant here. Um, so again, the little finger doing the static note. Let down and then pull off to this. So again, at the end of the story, if you will, you have notes from a C dominant chord. And then there's a another place you can do this, the same basic shape. Like that, so more of a gap in here this time. And then finally, this one feels different from the others because now it's your poor index finger having to bend near the nut all on its lonesome. So think back to all your previous training and try and get that whole finger as much as possible underneath the string, pushing it up, supporting. So the string is trying to push down and you're resisting from below. You might have to experiment a bit with the position of your wrist or your thumb to make sure that you can keep the other notes still rather than both notes bending together. But if you kind of roll all those into one lick, you get something like... Uh, which is a bit of good clean fun. And that's lick number one. So the second lick, this is more of a D dominant kind of... that kind of tonality and rather than just playing double stops where one note stays the same and the other one is bent this is more about breaking up the pair of strings and alternating between them so again the basic ingredient here would be sorry that kind of idea uh, so this note stays the same occasionally when you visit the E string it would be this note instead another chord tone Meanwhile, on the B string, this is where the naughtiness is happening. And to make, make sure you have the maximum kind of country flavour, the more abrupt you can make the bend, the better. This is not a time for the slow, anguished, bluesy bend. These have to be bends that sound like two notes of a melody connected as efficiently as possible. Uh, think of the way a pedal steel guitar sounds. And the whole pedal steel thing, of course, is that you can bend the string from nothing to its ultimate bent pitch just by pushing down on a pedal. So the sound of that instrument is typically abrupt, efficient bends. So, so there's your, your basic concept there. Um, 
you could pick every note or you could, as I like to do sometimes, use the pick for all the B string notes and this finger for all the, the top E string. So now you can expand that by uh, moving down here. It's very much the same kind of alternation. The bends and the string changes happen at the same time. So you might find that uh, either this, you know, they're both usable fragments and you could turn either one of those into a lick all of your own, should you choose to do so. And then I figured to round things off, we should have the country cliche. Um, and I call it a country cliche, but even players like Zach Wilde are, are kind of fond of that. So it's a one size fits all lick. And you can see that basically the core of that is trying to play this triad shape, but doing so by bending the G string up from a tone below. And once you've got that under your fingers, you can kind of break things up by applying some hybrid picking pattern with this hand. Um, so I'll try and string all, all that together. So there you go, that's lick number two. Just to expand on the idea from lick number two at the end there, that can... Um, that's an example of playing a triad where you're bending up to the lowest of the three notes. You can do a similar thing if you're using lower strings where you bend up the highest note to a, to a target chord tone. Let's go back to C. Everything's better in the key of C. Um, so a classic shape for that kind of principle would be... very pedal steel. If you add a volume pedal it becomes even more pedal steel but for the purposes of this discussion I figured you might as well hear what's happening at the start of each note and then you can disguise that with a volume pedal swell should you feel so inclined. Um, so this basically this next lick would start in C and then go to D7 and then So some kind of C dominant or C major and then a D dominant and then sorry, um, G maybe altered or maybe just a normal G seventh. It's essentially a C major lick with a little bit of movement going on and I'll just play you the whole thing. Um, So the, the basic ingredients there would be that one there. You really have to kind of mentally divide this hand in two so that these fingers stay still. And this finger's doing all the bending stuff, hopefully without disrupting the rest of your hand. And then you can do a similar thing for the D dominant chord just by moving the A string note down one. So it's a normal dominant seventh there, and you can make it a ninth by bending this up. And then you move these two, and now, magically, it works over G. And now one of those, just because you have to resolve somehow, so... There's a bit of fun for you as an option, you could have... You can, uh, so this, this finger is kind of moving down and then back and then this way. And relax. And at the end, I thought we should probably throw in one of these because this is a nice country flavored thing to do. Where you're doing an artificial harmonic. For me, I'd like to hold the pick between the middle finger and the thumb, Van Halen style, and then I can use the index finger to point at the node there, 12 frets above what I'm fretting here. And then you add in, maybe plucking with these two extremities. Um, and that creates the illusion that it's the highest note which is being bent, but actually it's the lowest one. 
only your fretting hand needs to know this. And just by adding that harmonic, you make it pop up an octave. Um, so yeah, that's how lick number three works. Okay, and let's have a lick. Uh, let's have a lick at look number four. Um, this is um, something that's designed to work over uh, a chord progression, I guess. Uh, kind of A7, D7, G7, and then C, maybe C6. Um, so it's a pretty common chord progression in the, the field of music that we're referencing here pretty blatantly with every one of these licks. Um, again, the idea is to have a shape where one of the notes is bending and the others aren't, but we're really focusing on breaking up rather than playing all the notes together as a triple stop. So the basic idea is that for a, the A7th at the start, um, I'm kind of playing this rather sad triad. And then bending the G string up. And then... So, then that one. Um, that looks a little bit weird, but I think it's helpful to use the middle two fingers to bend the G-string. Many fingers make light work, and then use these stylistically inappropriate fingers to uh, just kind of bunch up like that. So you've got uh, this one. Or you could play it like that, that's also an option. Whatever your hand enjoys the most, that's the correct way to do it. And then the G7, you can do the same thing that you had at the start, but down two frets. And then just to round things off, uh, every country lick should have some movable sixth interval. Like that. And just for fun, maybe one of those. So I'll try and show you the whole thing. There's a basic hybrid picking pattern that repeats to some, to some degree here. Um, so you get this kind of pick, bend, middle finger, back to the pick, and now ring finger, and now all three low to high. Of course, the, the other thing I was remiss in not mentioning to you earlier is the ancient art of cheating. Um, there's really no other way to play that and then bend the B string upper tone to resolve into a major triad. So you, you, you can either bend behind the nut. Sorry. It's such a long way away. This fills me with sadness. So you have to find some way of grabbing that string anywhere behind your fretting hand. Actually, the thumb's quite a nice one. Um, or it could be your fingers pulling up. Or it could be... Use your imagination. Um, so that whole lick in its splendid entirety would be something like... This isn't so much a lick, it's just a cheeky, kind of legally sound way of telling you how to play Albatross by Fleetwood Mac with just one guitar. Um, so I'm not actually going to play out Albatross, that would get us into all sorts of legal shenanigans, I'm sure. But the, the two double stop shapes that you might need to use would be in the key of B. That one there. So. The convenient thing about the geometry of a typical set of guitar strings is if you play that shape and then just bend the strings up so that they stay roughly parallel to each other, the top E should go up a semitone and the B string should go up a tone. If it hurts, I guess you could... 
explore different pairs of fingers, but there's something to be said for sticking with those, and you'll see why, because they're... Because the next double stop is this one. Um, 10th on the B, 11th on the G, and now you want both of those strings to go up a tone, so you have to push the B string a little bit harder. Once you're up there, you have the option of either just letting them down, or letting them down one fret at a time. Um, so, the version of the lick that you'll find in the magazine is basically to go from B major to E major. So, not much of a lick, but I think you can use your ingenuity and find other applications for those double stops. And that just leaves us with lick number six. Um, we've explored some of what you can do bending the topmost note or the bottommost note of a triad shape to get some of that country flavour. What's really a little more fiddly is to bend the middle note. Um, just think about that for a moment. It's obviously not going to work. Or is it? Um, there's, here's one example of how you can make it work. Um, maybe in the key of D major. Um, so the easy part is just to play this rather Andy Summers-esque chord shape. And then bend the little finger note up a tone. And you'll need some kind of biceps in here, I think, to get the little finger note to bend enough without disrupting chord there. And now the, the secret part is, once you've bent that up, just to pluck the open, so not the open, the top E string. Now, whether this works or not will depend largely on which part of the, your little fingertip you're using to fret that string. I think the closer to the fingernail you can be, the more likely it is that the underside of that fingertip will not mute the top E string by the time you finish the bend. Um, so that's the version of the lick that you'll see in the magazine, I believe. So really, that's the useful bit. If you get good at that, you will find a home for it, I'm sure. And this part here, that's just me being silly. Um, you can play these harmonics here. And then bend behind the nut so that you get... And you hear that sort of swoops into being a triad. So some country-flavoured ideas there. Please don't hurt yourselves. And... That's all from me. See you next month for an emotional final instalment. Cheers. <laughs>